Lovely to see you all here this morning. We've got a lovely day in Sydney. It's overcast, but it's still, it's fine weather. And, uh, and that's always a blessing. I have a real treat for you this morning. It's pretty exciting. I'm actually on board one of the vessels. So we won't spoil the surprise too much, but uh, let's say hello, good morning to everybody, first of all. Okay, great, how are you all? I think we've got, looks like it, a largely um, American audience by the looks of it this morning, which is probably no surprise based on the time that I've made this. But feel free to let me know where you're all from and I'm really excited about this. This is going to be an amazing tour this morning. I just hope everyone got the message because it would be a shame to miss out. So tell me, what's the weather like where you are? Hi, Mum. My mum just joined and I forgot to say hello to her yesterday because there were too many people joining all at the same time and I didn't even notice that she came on. It's very cold in St. Louis. I've got a friend in St. Louis and I'm hoping she's going to join one of our tours. I forgot to look up what the temperature is here today, but it's very humid. We've got six minutes to go before we kick off. And I tell you what, we've got this unbelievable motor launch just cruising in to Darling Harbour. I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see it. Goodness only knows who owns this thing, but it's huge. Let's have a look. I have no idea what that thing is. Do people live on it or is it just for cruising? Yeah, we, Cindy, I agree. Wow. Wow is right. Jackson, it's called. Yeah, hi to you too. Looks like the kind helicopters land on billionaire bucks. Yeah, um, I don't know. Is that, a, is that a landing pad on top? It's hard to tell. I'm going to get up and get a bit closer and have a bit of a closer look at this thing. He's going to turn around. Should we wave? Will, we get, will he toot at me if I wave at him? Sheila, you took a tour here back in 2001. What did you think? I can't even conceive of the amount of money that it would take to have or operate something like that. spent two great weeks in Oz. Lucky you. Hope you enjoyed it. All right. Come back to me for a moment. Yeah, I'm wearing my California hat. I decided to uh, wear a cap today instead of a hat. That way I can pack it away in my backpack more easily. So it's a nod to all you uh, Americans joining me on my tour my California hat. It's a $15 million super yacht for dining and bar experience, according to Chrome. Thanks, Cindy. Okay, so it's, hmm, I wonder how much it costs to have dinner on that. Out of my price range, I think. Okay, so we're 20 seconds into the tour. Let's get started. Okay, so before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we're meeting today on the lands of the Gadigal people of the Aora Nation and pay respects to their elders past, present and emerging. This is known as an acknowledgement of country and it's usually given at the start of any official event or uh, occasion simply to pay respects to the original inhabitants of this land. So where we are starting this morning is on the James Craig, which is a three-masted vessel moored in Darling Harbour. And this, if I do a slow pan around, is Darling Harbour. We'll get to see more of it as we progress through the tour. There's a couple of interesting vessels over there that we'll show you. But this was unexpected. I really wasn't expecting to be actually on board the James Craig this morning. So this beautiful ship, which I know very little about, except that I know that it was built in 1874. It's a three-masted iron hull vessel. Do I know Sticky at the Rocks? No, I don't know Sticky at the Rocks. Is that a place, Joan? 
Here's the ship's wheel. Look at the beautiful timber. And this ship was a oh, lolly store. Um, I don't don't know it, uh, but there's lots of interesting stores down at the rocks. We should do a rocks tour sometime. So the hull of this vessel was located down in the very south of Tasmania and brought to Sydney where it was restored. They spent over 40 years restoring it at a cost of more than $30 billion. I'm just going to pick up my backpack and we'll start walking. Bear with me while I zip it up. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so here's the main mast and beam. This ship is now used not only for people to walk on and, and do their own self-guided tours, of course, but does actually sail from time to time. It can take 80 passengers. Let's have a look up into the ropes up there. go 80 sorry Jane yeah I stumbled on my words all right now I'm about to negotiate some steep stairs so I'm just going to be quiet and concentrate for a second there's three stairs down to the lower deck or the main deck This ship um, was under sail when it was in operation. And I've had it explained to me this morning that that meant that it was able to take very light cargo, um, which would, meant it was cheap. So it would carry um, the sort of stuff that the steam boats didn't take, steam engine boats. Now it has a motor built into it so that it can um, take passengers. I've got a picture here of what it was looked like when it was found in Tasmania. So this is this was the Hulk that it was restored from. That, that was um, located in Tasmania in the 70s, I think, and brought it back up here. So they restored that into this beautiful vessel sitting here now. If we go up the front end of the boat, ship, feels disrespectful to call it a boat, doesn't it? Here we have, what do you call this? Is this the galley? The old iron stove there. It's really tiny in here. There's a little information board about uh, the kitchen. This is the galley where the cook prepared meals for the entire crew, but the food wasn't always very good, as recalled by John Sharkey Keane, a crew member in the 1920s. You guys can take a photo of that if you want more information. I won't read the whole thing out to you. Okay, now we come up towards the front. You can tell I know nothing about this boat, absolutely nothing. I'm pretty sure that's the anchor chains though. 
and then we've got a bell, ship's bell. with the name Clan MacLeod, 1874, Glasgow, inscribed on it. Okay. I'll just get another shot of the, the rigging for anyone who's interested in that sort of thing. There we go. Okay, now I am going to quickly move on. I know this ship need, deserves a bit more attention than this, but we've got lots more to see and do. So it's just another little shot there if anyone's interested. Okay, I am going upstairs. We'll take a couple of last shots of this, of the James Craig before we leave her. Just do a quick pan around. And if anyone's interested in more information about the James Craig, um, you can look her up on the National Maritime Museum site, which is www.sea.museum. I've got to get down this, uh, this narrow walkway now, very carefully. Okay. So that was the James Craig. She's a beautiful ship. There's only four working vessels left in the world um, of her type. Two of them are in the US. One's in San Diego. The Star of India, I think, is the name of that one. One's in Galveston in Texas. And the fourth one's in France. They're not going to find out about the James Craig on the National Maritime Museum. It oh, they won't? It belongs to the Sydney Heritage Fleet. Sydney Heritage Fleet. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to um, do this. Yeah. Thanks, Sally. This lady works with um, the James Craig. It's just given us this information. So if you want more information about the James Craig, there's some details there. They've also got a Facebook and Instagram by the looks of it as well. Thank you. Have, Have a good nice. day. Bye, Sally. We'll say hello. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All righty, let's walk on. So, as I said, this is Darling Harbour. Uh, it was first known by the uh, early settlers as Cockle Bay because it was an area where there was uh, large quantities of uh, discarded shell fish, seashells, like mussels and oyster shells and all that sort of thing discarded around the uh, shores of the bay. Of course that got used in a lot of the early building in the lime kilns. I can't find any information on this sculpture but there is another one a little bit further around the bay by a sculptor by the name of Terence Plowright. Um, but there's no information board or anything on this. But it looks like uh, it looks like they're frozen in action, doesn't it? Right, the uh, Fred Hollows Ferry is just uh, pulling into Piedmont Bay Wharf. That's a commuter ferry. Fred Hollows, of course, you would know as the. Uh, the father of eyesight, really, you'd have to describe him. Fantastic work with um, restoring eyesight in third world countries. 
we're coming up to the National Monument to Migration. This wall has 30,000 names on it. The people who arrived as migrants to Australia. They represent over 200 countries. I don't think there are many more countries than 200. So if we have a quick look, we can see just some of the names. I can see a lot of Greek names, a lot of Italian names. And there's some quotes as well. This one says, our first port of call was in Western Australia, up the north, Carnarvon. Then I thought to myself, if this is Australia, because the only reception we got was a black crow on the fence post, and I think we had to walk something like five miles into the township. And I thought if this was Australia, send me back home as soon as possible. That was Hassan Sali, who arrived in 1954. Put all those names, thousands and thousands of them, 30,000. It's called the Welcome Wall. If I step back any further, I'm going to end up in the sea. There we go. So the tread hollows is just pulling out. And that in the background is uh, Jamie Packer's attempt at building a casino in Sydney. He doesn't have a license for it yet. There's a lot of controversy about it. So what we're approaching here is the uh, replica of the Endeavour. Finding a good spot for it. A bit tricky with that lamppost in the way. Full replica. It does actually go to sea. I believe it's circumnavigated the globe at least twice, I believe. See if we can get into a good spot for a picture of the Endeavour. Of course, the Endeavour, the original Endeavour is the ship that James Cook arrived in Sydney on. Well, he didn't actually arrive in Sydney, he arrived in Botany Bay. Yeah. 1770s, he arrived. Sort of like, looked like a good spot. Based on that, the English started sending people over in 1788. Okay, so we're not going to get her fully in, are we? There's a sandwich board behind me trying to trip me up. It is quite a contrast, isn't it? Look at those two side by side. waiting for some people to get past me so I can move along. So we're walking past the National Maritime Museum and there's a lot of vessels moored here. The next one that we come to is the HMAS Onslow, which is a submarine that was used largely for intelligence gathering. Maybe an atom shot. Oh, um, I can do that of this lighthouse. Kind of walk straight past the lighthouse. All right, you ready? Anyone who doesn't know what I'm about to do, I'm about to go sideways so you can get a vertical shot. 
So ready, one, two, three. Here we go. And I'm going to come back again now. There. So at this point here, we've got lots and lots of boats, lots of boats. We have all these small sailing craft. I won't take you down there to have a look at them all because we don't really have time. We need to get to the um, Tumbalong Park. Uh, that's a patrol vessel over there. And then we've got the HMAS Onslow, which is the submarine. As I said, it was used largely for intelligence gathering. Up here we have a lifeboat. So I can show you this board, but it's not in very good condition. It's uh, been weather affected. But if anyone is interested in, in the boats that are here in Darling Harbour, There we go. That's about the best I can do. So we've got the HMAS Onslow is over the back of this um, pavilion here. We'll go around and see that. Oh, sorry, the Onslow is the, um, the sub. HMAS Vampire. Unusual name. I don't know how they've arrived at that name. This is the Harding lifeboat above my head. A destroyer named Vampire. My thoughts exactly, Cindy, and I can't figure out where the name comes from. I've done a little bit of hunting around to find out, but none the wiser. Whoever thought of that name. So we're coming into the thick of Darling Harbour here now. So before we move on, I'll just take a shot from over here. Got the lighthouse. Maybe because it draws blood. <laughs> That's one theory, I guess. So the crate was also used in World War II. It operated out of Singapore. It, uh, it acted like a, a Japanese fishing vessel, but, in, but it was actually uh, surreptitiously doing work for the Allies. So for all intents and purposes, it was disguised as a um, disguised as a uh, Japanese fishing vessel and then next to it we've got tribal warrior which was a pearling lugger that's this one here on the left and here comes the vampire number 11 does anyone know if the number 11 represents anything uh, Vampirical. So this is a naval destroyer. It was heavily armed. You can see the gun turrets up the top there. And again, it's one of those ones that's difficult to get into a good position to, uh, to take a good shot of. Yeah. 
me step back a little bit and see if we can get it into, into frame a bit better. There you go. The HMAS Vampire. There is an information board over here on it if anyone would like some information on it. Okay, there you go. So you can take a photo of that if you want for later. I can see that it was de decommissioned and partly stripped in 1986. And it doesn't say anything there about how it got its name. It was built in Sydney, built at Cockatoo Island. This one here is quite pretty. Let's see if we we'll find out what one this is. Next to it is the Doifkin, and the Doifkin is the oldest ship here. It, it's a, well, it, it's based on an old ship. It's a replica as well. <clears throat> My gimbal's playing up, wanting to do funny things. There we go. So the Doifkin was a, a Dutch ship was built in 1606, sailed from Banda in Indonesia and was the first ship to make contact, first European ship to make contact with Australia. It mapped part of Cape York, the western coast of Cape York and it was commanded by Willem Kuschens, if I have said that correctly. And I knew nothing about this. I always thought Dirk Hartog was the first to arrive in Australia, but it turns out that's not so. It was this one here. Here is some information on the, the Doifken, which means little dove in Dutch. In 1606, the communities of the Cape York Peninsula were the first Aboriginal people to encounter Europeans and repel them. And that's what it would have looked like under sail. You can actually sail aboard the Doifkin if you like. I'm not sure how much it costs. And it also says you can join the crew. So if anyone's interested, come and join the crew of the Doifkin. In the background over there is um, Sydney Tower, which I think is still the tallest construction in Sydney. Someone will correct me if I'm wrong. This is Piedmont Bridge, which used to be a road bridge. It was replaced by the expressway, which you might be able to see in the background over there in the 80s. <laughs> My see, um, And uh, it's now a walking bridge. It was going to be destroyed. It was going to be demolished, but uh, it was saved. And it is still a working swing bridge. So that part in the middle there with the curves is the part that actually swings open if tall ships need to get past this point into the harbour. this point here I'm not sure if you can actually see the mechanism in the middle there that swivels on the base that it swivels on can't imagine why anyone would have wanted to demolish it I think it's a lovely old bridge so now we're walking into the modern part of Darling Harbour, which is the restaurant precinct. Lots of lovely outdoor eateries here. A lot of them are closed at the moment, of course, because of COVID. I'm just going to turn back and have another look at the uh, bridge from this angle. 
you can see a little cabin up there. There used to be a guy who drove or controlled the opening of the bridge. I'm not sure if that's where it's still controlled from or not. Then we have all our modern high-rise alongside. This is a new hotel that's being built. It's part of Marriott Group. It's just called W. And you can see, I know they talk about cranes in um, Patrick and Aaron's tours in New York. You might be surprised to learn that in Sydney or on the east coast of Australia, we have more cranes. I think that's still the same statistic. It certainly was a year or two ago. More cranes here than in North America on the east coast of Australia. It was numbering around about the 570 cranes mark. We have heaps of them. I can tell you about half of them are in my suburb. So this is the port. It's an incredible amount of development, Belinda. Not everyone's happy about it. Seems to be a lot of overdevelopment. There seems to be a lot of empty space. Development for the sake of development. These two restaurants are um, quite well known. This is the Casbah. Look at the, um, <laughs> the uh, what do they call them? Shisha, shisha pipes in there. Can you get signal in the tower? Um, in that Westfield tower? Is that the one you're talking about, Cindy? I haven't tried and it's not cheap to go up there, but I have been promising myself I will go up there sometime. So uh, stay tuned. If I ever if I ever add that to my tours, I'll let you know. All right, so we're at the 30 minute mark and we still have to get around to these airships. Are you guys going to dare me to go on this thing? I don't know how long it's going to take. We can go and ask. Rather see the airships? Yeah, Joan, I think I agree. We can always do the, the Ferris wheel another time. <clears throat> Still got about a five minute walk to get over there. So it's, uh, it's $10 per person and doesn't look like anyone's on it at the moment. So this whole area is called Harborside and it's literally just a lot of eateries, bars and eateries. This big glass almost looks like a conservatory sitting on top of it. Probably lovely views, Caitlin. Yes, I think I think so. Um, maybe I should build it, build it as a separate tour one day. It's not bad. It's not bright harsh sunshine we've got a little bit of cloud cover which is keeping the temperature down a bit which is perfect it's over here at the very end of Dadling Harbour there's a they call it a um, oh, floating floating outdoor cinema or something but it's not actually operating at the moment I'm not sure where the screen would go. I was just looking up yesterday everything that they have in Darling Harbour, what's what's working, what's not, and uh, it's definitely not operating at the moment. <clears throat> so 
So I think Patrick and Aaron were showing uh, the Hard Rock Cafe yesterday in Baltimore. Here's our one. But nowhere near as impressive, is it? Where's the guitars on the chimney stacks and the big, huge building? We've just got this tiny little Hard Rock Cafe up there. This is the International Convention Centre where they have things like, you know, huge home shows, you know, those big shows, events that run for two or three days. They all happen in this place. Over here you can hire out uh, the little paddle boat. This one you mean, Cindy? Yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? There we go. These weird things over here are part of the Festival of Sydney. They're uh, lit up at night and they're based on nudie branks. I think the display is called Microcosms, but there's a, there's a poster up here in a little bit that we'll find out more. Find a good spot to take. These, this makes a cute photo. Try and get a little bit closer. Hi, Sandra. I think they would look amazing at night all lit up, don't you? Unfortunately, nighttime in the city is not sort of a thing that I do. Okay. I'll try and get a little bit closer. It involves steps. Macrocosm, that's what that display is called. Let's just. Um, hop on a pedal boat and explore Goldberg Aberline Studios Macrocosm, a massive, vibrant, inflatable artwork floating on Cockle Bay. Inspired by the fragile small worlds of our waterways, it makes us think how our small actions influence the bigger picture. So that's what that display is called. Okay, so at this point we go underneath the motorway into Tumbalong Park. Tumbalong, as I mentioned before, was the name that this uh, bay was known to the indigenous residents of the area. So when they've redeveloped that park, they've reflected that in the name of the park. And I apologize for all the road noise. We'll be under it soon and gone. Tumbleon Park's just a nice open space where families can come to. There's water over here that's nice and shallow that children can play in. So 
lots of kids play equipment around here. This is still the International Convention Centre. So that I think is like their small exhibition space or meeting space. Could even be offices, I'm not really sure. It's interesting architecture though, I really like it. going to have a bit of an issue because um, the phone that I use for signing in is in my backpack without a SIM card. We've got 16 inflatable pieces, the biggest are 6 metres tall. Again, these are lit up at night as well, so it would be lovely to come down here at night and see them illuminated. Right, but I'm going to get round to the entrance, see if I can get in without scanning a QR code. Hello. Hi, do you have a way for me to manually check in? Um, no, I don't. You sure? I think my, my phone's in my backpack and the SIM's in this phone here and I'm using it to live stream. So thank you so much. I've been here twice before. So. so the way this works is when you get close to them, they start playing. And if there's lots of people in here getting close to all of them, they all start playing at once. So we actually want lots of people to be in here. The more people in here running around, the better the effect is. Little kids and big kids, Cindy. Time for me to run around. If you could see my knees, Eva, you would not suggest such a thing. I'm going to give you a minute without these two. Thank you. 
wind is music. I'm uh, sorry, the wind is moving them, and the music is created when you get close to them. So, if you're moving around, there must be a lag. You mustn't always have to be in their proximity. This one's not making any noise at the moment, I don't think. Oh, there he goes. Our time's nearly up. I'm glad we got, we would not have made it if I did the Ferris wheel. There's, there's just simply no way that we would have made it up here in time. So I'm glad we gave that a miss. What did you think? Did you enjoy it? Thanks, Lorraine. So in about half an hour, I'm going to be just heading just across the way over there behind that big orange board. That's where the Chinese gardens are and I'm going to be in there in about half an hour's time. So if you love this and you can still manage to stay with me, I'd love you to join me in the Chinese gardens. I was going to say it will be a slower pace in this one, but I think we've finished nicely on a really sort of gentle, gentle way to finish. I'm just gonna move back and try and get a big shot at these, see if we can get them all in. Get one big shot. Perhaps not quite, but almost. Thanks Lorraine. Yeah, there's no jumping out of aeroplanes for me these days or um, downhill skiing. So hopefully this is a panacea for all of that. <laughs> all right, everyone. If you love my tour and felt that I deserve it, um, always grateful for coffee money. So um, otherwise, I'll see you again next time. Bye for now. I won't bungee jump like a guy the other week. No, I don't. I won't do that, Tariq, I promise. Bye, everyone.